हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वंस अगेन वेलकम बैक टू बायोलॉजी क्लास माइ सेल्फ डॉक्टर राघवेंद्र वेल वी विल डिस्कस टुडे विद अ न्यू चैप्टर व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एज एनिमल किंगडम फाइन सो लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज एनिमल किंगडम वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग मोर अबाउट डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ कांसेप्ट्स इन द एनिमल किंगडम सो इट इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वेरी फैसिनेटिंग चैप्टर एज सच इन दिस चैप्टर variety of a type of a creatures or the animals we are going to study fine so here in the chapter we will be discussing more about yes few introductory points i will be telling you introduction yes we will be discussing in this difference between so differences between plants and animals also we will discuss plants and animals we will discuss secondly we will discuss about basic you can say that basic features of animals we will discuss then we will discuss about mainly animals animals based on habitat habitat and nutrition nutrition we will discuss number 4 we will discuss about basis for yes classification of animals classification of animals we are going to discuss and we are going to discuss about even the study of study of metazoa metazoa or entire animal kingdom we are going to discuss let me mention here when we are talking about basically the animal kingdom as such you are observing in this chapter yes we will be discussing more about introductory points related with mainly the differences between plants and animals as well as basic features of animals we will be discussing animals based on habitat and nutrition and basis for classification of animals we will be discussing so metazoa refers to be the mainly the animals and what are the basis even and then study of metazoa as such there are invertebrates or vertebrates we can say there are non chordates as well as chordates also do exist we will discuss about that so as such when we talk about animals yes so the whole world without animal it not be so much beautiful or quite interesting with animals yes so we find all our around yes there are lots of butterflies honey bees lots of insects okay we find the number of aquatic as well as the terrestrial animals without all these animals the world cannot be so much beautiful because mainly the insects yes they do act as a pollinators and then because of that yes mainly the flowering plants and angiosperms are maximum in number and recycling of whatever the biomass or biological resource yes mainly facilitated by mainly the presence of again animals we can say so animals play crucial and vital role in the ecological balance also we can say whether it may be the mammal whether it may be the birds whether it may be the reptiles or amphibians whether it may be the fishes or fishes or whether it may be lots of insects many yes we can find presence of animals make a lots of difference as such but one animal one species dominates too high then ecological imbalance can happen that is because of the human species as such so we the human interfering in the nature's rule and we are occupying the maximum space all over the globe and we are mainly causing the ecological imbalance that is because of the human greed so human greed for the sake of food it may be for the sake of space it may be so because of the species human variety of other species becoming mainly endemic endangered yes they become ultimately extinct also well so let us understand basically when we talk about the animals as such so in the animal kingdom before that let us understand what are the mainly the type of animals as such on record there are so there are nearly 1 million 
वन मिलियन एनिमल स्पीशीज एनिमल स्पीशीज यस सो फॉर डॉक्यूमेंटेड सो देर आर नंबर ऑफ अदर रिपोर्ट सम ऑफ द डॉक्यूमेंट दैट देर मे बी सेवन मिलियन देर मे बी वन पॉइंट फाइव मिलियन सो वन मिलियन रेफर्स टू बीस नियर टेन लैक वी कैन से सो अल्टीमेटली वेल नोन स्पीशीज आर टेन लैक so out of that when we talk about uh, what make the basic difference between animals as well as the plants so when we talk about uh, let us understand uh, plants so when we talk about the plants and then animals so when we say plants and animals very very important and basic differences yes we can find that can be as such mainly the plants are well known as uh, autotrophs plants are autotrophs because they do have the chlorophyll they do the photosynthesis they utilize the water they utilize the co2 in the presence of light or sunlight we can say and then they prepare their own food that's why they are called as autotrophs whereas animals can be heterotrophs heterotrophs why they are termed as heterotrophs because they survive on the plant material so they called as herbivores they survive by eating one another herbivore are eaten by carnivore yes they may be surviving on the dead and decaying plant or animal material yes they can be called as detrivores also there may be scavengers also so variety of yes kind of nutrition we can find in the animals so they are called as heterotrophs as such plants Uh, mainly don't have locomotion don't have locomotion as such animals exhibit exhibit better we can say better locomotion but there are certain animals where they won't move at all they may be sponges so there are certain exceptional cases but most of the animals yes they are highly locomotive or highly moving now the other difference we can say that mainly mean the consciousness or we can say that they do have delayed delayed response delayed response to stimuli yes we can say that animals are highly conscious highly conscious and then respond respond very fast to the different stimulations it may be the vibration of the sound it may be the temperature it may be the touch it may be the smell many variety of stimulations yes when it's present animals respond very well better than the plants so we can say that yes animals are highly Yeah, responding to the variety of stimulations. Other than that, in case of the plants, growth, yes, growth is continuous. Continuous, we can say. Whereas in case of the animals, growth is definite. So we can say that definite or limited, limited growth we can find. that is in case of the animals so now we can say that in case of the plants yes you cut a branch it will regrow again right so if you cut a head yes no human can regrow their head again right so growth is may be continuous in case of the plants whereas the growth is definite and limited in case of the animals now when you look at plants indefinite indefinite shape as well as a size they keep on growing size keep on increasing so that is what we say indefinite shape and size whereas the animals have definite definite or limited shape and size so these are the few basic differences between mainly plants and animals so this is what we call as yes the few basic introductory points related with mainly what we talk about animal kingdom let us understand what are the basic features of animals i hope you got an idea 
mainly there are around 1 million of animals do exist and the animals are highly we can say that distinct or different than that of the plants and then plants are autotrophs the animals are heterotrophs plants don't have the locomotion like that of the animals but animals exhibit better movement or locomotion or they change their place to place and then they keep moving so we call them as a highly locomotive delayed response to stimuli whether you play a music or guitar or you sing or you shout in front of the plant they may be responding but the delayed response will be there so you may find a difference in their behavior or the growth okay or the yield it has been seen that mainly nearby the house where wherever grow the crop the, because of the the music yes the crop around the house may be growing well but the crop away from the house may not be growing that much better okay so there is a definitely the plants also respond to good kind of music or the sound but they do response but it is a delayed response in case of the animals very fast and instinct response we can get now yes we do have different kind of senses as such it may be the visual sensation it may be the uh, olfactory or smelling sensation we do have the sensation of the different kind of a taste we can sense a different kind of a vibration or music or noise okay we can understand different kind of a touch also yes so these variety of senses are highly active in case of the animals whereas they are the very least we can say even touch may not also respond to the touch yes so plants and animals do have slight uh, similarities but there are lots of differences as such growth is very continuous as such in the plants they keep on growing and high regeneration capacity do they have but in case of the animals growth is a definite perfect shape size regeneration ability also limited to the certain kind of animal groups it may be the sponges okay so thus even it may be planaria or it may be the starfish we can say they do also have the regeneration but a certain limited number of animal groups do exhibit the regeneration not all the animals so these are few basic differences between the plants and animals as such a part of our introductory part of the animal kingdom we have discussed now let us understand the basic features of animals so when we talk about that all animals are definitely living one so my question is what do you mean by living how you can define yes the living or the life so when we talk about the living or the life people say that from birth to death is life no it is called as the life span but when we say life refers to be it is a active state of a metabolism so when we talk about yes basic features of the animals as such let me mention here basic features features of animals so they exhibit we can say animals are living when we say it is living living means active state of active state of metabolism metabolism in living body living body yes this can be considered as either living or it is the life you are living i am also living why because we do have the respiration we do have the circulation yes heart beats right so it's left side heart beat is there fine so we do have temperature regulation we do do, do the digestion excretion everything all these activities we call them as the metabolic activities so basic feature of animals yes they are living because they exhibit metabolism so thus when we talk about the, mainly the basic features of animals that includes metabolism metabolism a word it can also be called as it is the sum of anabolic anabolic and catabolic catabolic reactions 
what is this anabolism yes we eat the food we break all the nutrients yes glucose is released so breaking mechanism is called the catabolic reaction anabolism means a simple glucose combined together it can become glycogen or animal starch we can say so thus making up and breaking up reactions together is called as metabolism yes we do have the metabolism second we do have the growth yes growth due to cell division due to cell division this is what we say the real growth then number 3 mainly cellular organization cellular organization is what cells together they become the tissue tissue together cells going to form the tissues tissues forms the we can say organs organs form the organ system and then whole organism let me tell you we do have epithelial tissue we do have nervous tissue we do have muscular tissue all these different kind of tissues basically made up of cells so such tissues are going to form it may be the heart it may be the blood vessel so heart and blood vasculature system going to become circulatory system heart and blood vessels form the circulatory system so circulatory system along with the muscular system digestive system excretory system nervous system all these systems together they form the whole body or the organism so this kind of cellular organization do exist that is what we called as they are the basic feature of a animals now then there is again what we can say that uh, uh, here animals definitely do exhibit reproduction for existence of the species reproduction will be there so presence of reproduction for continuation of generation they do that what we call as mainly reproduction then yes mainly animals also exhibit one more important feature so what are those important features let me mention animals also exhibit important feature what it is called as interactions so animals exhibit most important features that is called as interactions what is this interactions yes let us understand animals exhibit the fifth important point mainly interactions animals do have wonderful mechanism of interaction such as it may be predation predation competition competition it may be parasitism it may be yes commensalism commensalism it may be mutualism mutualism it may be amensalism amensalism so these are basic uh, what we can say interactions exhibited by the animals so let me tell you what are these interactions again so when you talk about uh, predation means carnivores hunt and kill the herbivores so carnivores eating mainly we can say that carnivores yes hunt herbivores herbivores this is an example of a predation we can say and then when we talk about the competition yes competition among the same species or different species so between same or different different species yes competition do exist how yes there are variety of herbivores it may be the deer it may be the rhinoceros it may be the bison in the forest all they compete for the grass or it may be the lion tiger cheetah all they want to kill a particular kind of herbivore only there is a competition so 
the competition among the same species for the sake of space food as well as for the mate there is a competition so competition do exist in the animal group yes that is one of the important interaction among the animals then parasitism yes parasites can be let us understand they may be endo and ectoparasites yes so this is again interaction among the animals we can find endo and ectoparasites so there are what we can say endoparasite it may be the ascheal mean this ascaris in the intestine it may be a liver fluke in the liver it may be a, a plasmodium that cause malaria in the blood cells so variety of parasites inside the body we call them as endoparasite so they are mainly exploiting their host so the parasite and host relation parasitism we say ectoparasite it may be the ticks mites it may be the blood sucking what you can say uh, mainly the uh, leeches all these are ectoparasites so this kind of uh, interaction we can find among the animals then commensalism yes what is the commensalism a organism will keep on killing another organism even though it doesn't get any benefit it will kill the other organism best example let me tell you yes mainly penicillium penicillium notatum produce penicillin penicillin is an antibiotic it is an antibiotic biotic that kills variety of bacteria kills the bacteria so by killing this penicillium don't have any benefit but still yes we can say that there is mainly uh, what we mainly the mechanism that exhibit we call as commensalism sorry in fact this is what i am mentioning it is uh, in fact it is not commensalism it is amensalism yes let me mention here it is amensalism commensalism we will discuss in the end so this is what we say amensalism yes commensalism fine so there is a mutualism mutualism means uh, both are getting benefited let me tell you yes mutualism also yes let us understand means when the organism are getting benefited by one another yes in the animals we can find this mutualism so let me tell you both are getting benefited fine mutualism so mutualism the dependent dependent and host both are benefited so this is what we say mutualism so let me tell you some of the examples there is a, what we can say there is the mainly the crab is there hermit crab and sea anemone both are getting benefited best example yes c anemone and hermit crab a simple example c anemone cannot move it is a sessile we can say there is a term non locomotory organisms we call them as a sessile so it is unable to move but the hermit crab will come and hide in its base and lift that and keep moving so by doing so hermit crab what it will get it will get a place for hiding so this is what we say mainly the sea anemone or hermit crab we call it as yes so it is a mutualism now when we talk about commensalism yes commensalism let me tell you commensalism so dependent get benefited host unharmed means no benefit no loss that is what we call commensalism so here in the commensalism best example let me tell you there is a, yes 
सी एनिमोन सी एनिमोन एंड क्लॉन फिश क्लॉन फिश क्लॉन फिश गेट ए चांस टू हाइड गेट ए चांस टू ब्रीड वेर एज सी एनिमोन कॉलोनी डजेंट गेट एनी बेनिफिट दिस इज कॉल्ड कमेंसालिज्म लाइक दिस there are a variety of interactions that can be seen among the animals and that is what we say the basic uh, mainly features of the mainly animals so we need to understand one more important fact animals based on their habitat as well as based on their nutrition let us understand that also yes we need to know animals based on we will be discussing the basis of classification much more detailed points are there so those all points will be discussing definitely later so what i suggest you whenever you get a, a mainly the doubt so you can just uh, contact me here 8861283613 this is my contact what we can say yes you can save it as yeah so this is my name so any time you can whatsapp your doubt any time you can ask me the doubts so i am very happy to clarify your doubt so being in touch with the student it is a good opportunity for the student as well as the teacher because we are both we are in the process of learning and yes teaching sometimes students questions make us to learn many more important things yes we definitely will be far better and better day by day so this is what i think fine this is the contact that you can yes approach any time 24 by 7 all the seven days yes so let us understand now mainly the animals based on their habitat animals based on the nutrition animals based on habitat fine how we can define them yes they can be we can say that they are aquatic they are aquatic animals are of either marine which found in the salt water or sea water or they can be fresh water yes they can be fresh water forms aquatic so aquatic can be of again two type we call them as benthic benthic refers to be bottom dwellers they live at the bottom of the sea or the pond bottom dwellers or they can be nectons nectons means mainly nectons are let me tell you active swimming active swimming or swimmers at surface yes these are based on mainly the uh, the aquatic animals there are again another kind of animal we call them as a terrestrial terrestrial animals so they live on the land terrestrial yes the animals living on land living on the land aquatic means the animals living in the water marine means they live in the sea water or salt water yes mean in the fresh water organisms live in the pond or lake or a river so they can be benthic means bottom dweller of the pond or the ocean nectons or active swimming on the surface yes they can be living in the sea water or they can be living in the river and water also well when we talk about terrestrial animals terrestrial animals can be yes they are of three type so we call them as a burrowing burrowing means they live underground underground okay they can be yes arboreal arboreal means live on trees yes they can be aerial they always not living in the air yes they are active flying 
active flying animals it may be the birds okay or butterflies where they spend maximum time in the air so they called as aerial so these are the different kind of animals based on their habitat so animals based on the nutrition as well as the basis of classification still remaining and different group of animals all that we will be discussing in the next class in much more details we will be discussing these are all the very quite interesting facts in fact regarding with the animal kingdom well i hope you got an idea regarding the different kind of animals basis of classification we'll be discussing but the basic difference between animals and plants we discussed it and then basic characteristic of the animals we discussed it and then animals based on the habitat we have discussed it. animals based on the nutrition we'll be discussing the next class remaining points we'll be discussing the next class okay till then take care study well see you thank you very much